Welcome, my dear viewers. Um, as you may know, these type of episodes I'm doing are pretty much off the cuff, and I'm not presenting myself as an authority on, on any of these subjects I discuss. Uh, I just have an open mind, and I'm just looking into them, and I'm curious, as I hope you are too. The last uh, year or so, I've been checking out these sort of, um, what are they called? The, the Flat Earther, um, the Mud Flooders, the Truthers, etc. I don't class myself as one of them, but I keep an open mind, uh, mainly because I don't trust the people who make the rules for us. Uh, they have proved themselves right throughout history to be pieces of shit and uh, corrupt, evil bastards, if you know what I mean. So... I'm always suspicious, especially at the moment with this uh, virus, uh, pandemic, etc. I just, I, I don't trust them. I think there's something else going on, to tell you the truth. Uh, that's my opinion. You don't have to accept it, of course. I was just discussing with Odette the other night about the bubonic plague in London, 1665, I think it was. And then, very shortly afterwards, the Great Fire of London, which I think was 1666. And been finding out just purely by chance I landed on a another flat earth British truther channel which I'll show you in a minute I'll leave a link to his channel and which he mentions often when there's a, a big plague or a virus shortly afterwards is a huge firestorm throughout the the city which I find rather peculiar and that some of them were actually uh, set on purpose by the government at the time which he goes into and you can check out his video in full I'm not going to do it here, but I'll just show you a few bits of it. Um, and there was another mud. I can't even remember that word. What's it called again? Uh, a mud flooder. Yeah, mud flooder channel. And he brought to my attention the Dresden bombing. And he didn't want to show the pictures because he was frightened of being demonetized. Well, for me, it's par for the course. So I don't give a damn. So we're going to have a look at the images of the Dresden bombing. As I say, I'm no expert on this, and I welcome any expert commentary, any expert uh, opinions on this. I just find it very curious, uh, some facts that he brought to my attention on this uh, Mud Flooder channel, was uh, when you go to... First of all, we look at uh, the bombing of Dresden. We look at w Wikipedia, okay? And we're not going to go into why it was done and any politics or anything like that. I just really want to know what sort of bombs they were using. You'll see what I'm getting to. So they say here, 3,900 tons of high explosive bombs and incendiary devices, right? So then when you look what sort of bombs were being used, you can't really find out. It just comes up again, Wikipedia. No real description of, of the actual bombs they were using and the effect that they would have um, they just say you know create lots of fires I did read that somewhere but da, da. most of the victims were women children and the elderly you know great oh dear what sort of world do we live in so well, let's have a look at some of the images of of the victims and here we go we see some destruction the total destruction of the of that once beautiful city and that's one we just looked at before, isn't it? Absolute devastation. The, let's have a look at some of the images of the victims. Now, what this guy was pointing out on this Truther channel was that the the the, the fire, if the, if it was a fire, has, has totally incinerated the human, but the hair and the clothing is untouched. Um, I just don't understand that. Let's have a look at another one. This one I find very peculiar. This is a doctor's surgery. Uh, you can see the absolutely tragic. The the baby the baby stroller, the pram, it has left intact. Even the rubber around the wheels of the pram has not been uh, incinerated. But the humans are totally incinerated. Yet their hair is still intact. Their clothing, the lamp wire, totally intact. As I say, everything else is seemingly intact except for the human beings themselves, their flesh. This is also what I find peculiar. These appear to be blood. It's almost like their heads have exploded out, from, from possibly from the pressure of the bomb. I don't really know how it works. Again, I'm no expert. Almost seems to be like a microwave effect too, you know. Unfortunately, I once saw uh, some horrible evil humans. Uh, it was in the newspapers back then 
they had put a small animal in a microwave oven and it, this seemed to be a similar thing where it has exploded out so where else do we get to the victim sorry let's have a look what else here's one of a uh, obviously of a nazi officer and again the hair i mean look at that total destruction of the flesh and yet the clothes the buttons the embroidery everything is intact even the you know the, the sewing around the badge is intact how can this be can somebody explain to me how that can be this is not a very clear image but again all these are children absolutely terrible evil rotten again the the clothing is intact Let's see if we can find any more here's obviously afterwards they're going through trying to find the victims it almost looks like the, the, the flesh is mummified it's a very strange thing again the clothing intact damage to the wall what what sort of weapons were they using another one here let's have a long time what did, why, did they, why did people put such small images what's the point of that now look at this look look at the hand that that's a human hand that is a human hand the wood of the barrels wine or beer barrels whatever they are totally intact not even scorched no singe marks the hands they look like they've melted if that's even possible of course it's not i mean how how does something like that happen i'm totally at a loss let's see what else there is here, here we have obviously two people you can't distinguish what sex they are anymore uh, it seems to be a pipe on the ground um is there false teeth down there again hair absolutely not even singed not even singed yet they have been incinerated or mummified oh, i just i'm at a loss i'm at a loss let's have a look what else there is this one seems quite tragic let's just see if this actually if this resolution becomes clearer it, it looks like a couple. Are they an old couple? Are they young? We can't tell. They're holding hands. They're the sort of last embrace during their death throes. Hopefully it was quick. Um, again, all clothing intact. The wood paneling behind, totally intact. The chair, no singe marks, anything. Just the destruction of the human flesh. Now here's into, This is the Hamburg Firestorm bombing. Hamburg firestorm bombing again a very similar thing clothes are intact I'm going to put a, a warning in the description there are some graphic graphic images here um, hair intact very very strange face is just sort of melted off right down to the bone here example of a victim of heat position of hair shows clearly splitting and retraction of skin of skull and around orbit clothing practically intact well you know clothing burns doesn't it so if there's such intense heat to burn the skin right off his skull why are his clothes absolutely intact okay here's another one here uh, and again th th these are not gloves this per this is this person's skin that has sort of melted and mummified but again the perfect preservation of the clothing he's even wearing a uh, an air raid a gas mask which is made of rubber totally intact absolutely cloth here intact shoes intact everything except for him oh, i just don't understand that at all so this was the guy i was telling you about uh martin Liet Lietke, Lietke. uh sounds like a sort of dutch name doesn't it and he was discussing about the san francisco earthquake and the firestorms that it apparently caused which swept through the city this is san francisco before it happened um and then he shows you the footage directly i think that was like a year before or, or some several months before that footage you can check out his channel as i say i'll leave the link and this is the devastation of san francisco after that but there's some interesting information here which he brings to light about uh which i'm just trying to find here quickly prior 
to the San Francisco earthquake uh, firestorms, they had a plague. Directly before that, they had a plague caused by, well, they say the rats, but we know it's the fleas from the rats, isn't it, actually, that uh, that spreads the, the plague virus. Um, and after this comes these huge, yeah, firestorms throughout these cities, which I find very strange. And there's, you know, they say there's no such things as coincidence, because I've just been discussing with Odette about the Great Fire of London, the Great Fire of London, how it wiped out the uh, the plague. Makes you wonder, doesn't it? And it's showing different periods in history. A uh, fire set by public health officials burns through Honolulu's Chinatown, undated. So they've deliberately set this town on fire, and apparently there was armed guards set by the government around the perimeters. Was that to stop people from getting out? Because afterwards, he says, there's no photos of any uh, of any survivors. Anyway, you can check that out. Um, he goes into different different theories, also about directly before uh, in six, this book was written in 1665 during the time of the plague. He's talking. This book is talking about comets, blazing stars. You know, are, are they causing the firestorms? Questions, questions, my dear. My dear Odites, and comets, uh, philosophically, historically, and astrologically, with a brief yet full account of 1665 comets or blazing stars, okay, visible over Europe. Okay, now this bla- what are saying here? These blazing stars threaten the world with famine, plague, and wars. Now I know this was written a few hundred years ago, but why? Why would a comet? threaten the world with famine, plague, and wars. To princes, death to kingdoms, many crosses, to all estates, inevitable losses. To herds, men, rot, to plowmen, hapless seasons, to sailors, storm, cities, civil treasons. So these firestorms are are causing immense destruction upon the earth and causing all these uh, wars and plagues. So the question is, my dear viewers, will they introduce martial law? There's rumours of it here in Switzerland. Uh, You can see there's no products on the shelves here. We're having the same mass panic toilet rolls. God knows why people are hoarding toilet rolls. I can't can't figure that out. And then they'll say there's a shortage of bananas, possibly. So then people go and buy bananas. Now they're saying there might be not enough insulin. So people are panicking, trying to get insulin. Um, Yeah. All very strange. Uh, So, yeah. So last Saturday here was gorgeous weather. And the people were out and about. I went out for a drive. And there was people out on push bikes, roller roller blades, jogging, dogs, families. Everyone was out. And then after that, the... um, the the regierung the uh, the rulers decided they may be bringing in harsher uh, laws to stop that. So, uh, you know, I have a small business, and my business I've been forced to close for like nearly two weeks now. Uh, not allowed to open until April the nineteenth, and then after that they may also uh, prolong that. Um, so it's devastating for people with small businesses. We're not making any money. As you can see here, they're doing controls, uh, spot checks. Um, Yeah, it's just getting to a very sort of, you know, sort of unreal situation where they are now starting to intrude upon our privacy. Uh, They say it's for our own good. I don't know about that. Um, And I've heard a lot of rumors, and even here in Switzerland, people saying they're going to hospitals, and the hospitals are like nearly empty. So... Anyone who works for hospitals in any part of the world, can you tell me what if that's true? You know, I'm not saying that's the actual truth. You hear a lot of stuff on the internet. I don't believe, you know, I don't believe a lot of it, put it that way. So you tell me what, what it's like in your part of the world. If you work in a hospital, are they full? Do you have lots of cases of the coronavirus happening? You see here we have people here on the, on the lake here in Zurich. And uh, yeah, it says now at the bottom there, more than five people are not allowed to gather together. So they're stopping that. They don't want people going outside. 
um, yeah, so I'm just very curious what it's like in the hospitals in your part of the world and what's happening in your part of the world regarding this coronavirus and the restrictions that the government uh, is put in place. Yeah, so they're, they're closing off uh, public areas now so that you can't gather. And they've also brought in, and they're bringing in the army. I don't know exactly why, but they've called in the army. They sent them SMSs, apparently. That they had to be, uh, you know, shipping out and getting ready. For what? And now they've brought out a law where they have said that they can uh, access our mobile phones and our mobile devices, uh, tracking devices. Uh, even if you have location services turned off, they can still track you. Believe me, don't think that's going to stop them. That's been proved. So they're now going to be tracking you to make sure that you don't get together in a group. Yeah. So any more than five people and the police are going to be coming out to that location. Um, what are, are they worried about people talking, <laughs> starting a revolution or something? It's most peculiar. OK, so I do know in England, too, they, they've brought out spot fines for people gathering together in groups. Um, it just seems really strange. Oh, worldwide. Yeah, I'd like to know your thoughts on this. Yeah, maybe I'm a bit too suspicious of the government. That's just my nature. Uh, I don't trust them one bit. But I would, I would like to know your thoughts. Uh, I have an open mind. Uh, again, I don't trust the government, <laughs> but I have an open mind. But anyway, I'd like to know your thoughts on this and um, share with me what's happening in your part of the world. One, one thing before I go I'd like to point out is that what really annoys me is people... They'll, they'll look at the video title of mine that says the, the grisly case or the gruesome murder. And even if it's a video where the title is not making it clear what the subject matter is about, very shortly into the video, you will see what it's about. It's a murder case, and you will see that I use a lot of images. And then they'll write under, uh, you should put a warning in there because I've been traumatized by that, and I, I can't unsee that. Uh, you know, it's affecting me. Oh, God. What's wrong with you people? It's like when they go to a fairground or a carny, as they say in America, and they know for a fact they're going to vomit when they go on the Ferris wheel. And they go on and they vomit. And then they go off and they say, uh, you, you should put a sign on saying this ride could cause nausea. I'm going to sue you now. I hate these people. I fucking hate them. I really do. I really do. It's like, do not do not come on my channel. Do not come on my channel, right? You know, if you see a, a video and you know that it's going to affect you in your sensitive little flower, it's going to, you know, traumatize you for the rest of your life, don't click on the video, right? Be responsible for your own self. I'm not going to, I'm not going to hold your hand and guide you through this. You have to decide for yourself whether that subject matter could be possibly harmful to you, okay? Oh my God, I got that off my chest. Anyway, <laughs> my dear viewers, I wish you a happy lockdown, wherever you are. I know some countries, I think like Sweden, they're not even bothered. They're just carrying on like normal. And it's like, you know, bugger the rest of the world. I don't know what you're going crazy about. We're just going to continue as before. Let me know your thoughts. Okay, bye-bye. I'm, I'm off now. I've finished my, my tirade. Bye-bye, my, my friends.